The San Francisco Bay Area is home to some 1,500 Tibetans. Many of them had escaped from Tibet after China's occupation of their country in 1959. They walked over the high Himalayas to find refuge in India and Nepal. Others had been born in exile where they grew up, not having seen their homeland. <laughs> But then there are those who were born here, kept safe from hardships of refugee lives by the place of their birth, the United States of America. This is their story, a story of their quest for a place where to preserve their language, their culture, and their identity. This is the story of their community center, their home for hope. Like many Americans, every day, these Tibetans go about their lives doing various kinds of jobs. Like most new immigrants, they work hard so that they can both support themselves and their families, either here or back home in Tibet, India or Nepal. For the younger Tibetans who attend schools and colleges where English is the language of instruction, their challenges are manifold. Among them is to both survive their assimilation into the American culture and to overcome the resulting alienation from their roots. Well, at home, my parents like tell me to speak Tibetan, but like. I speak English a lot at home and like I get in trouble a lot because I go to uh, an English school more than Tibetan school so like I'm more fluent in English now. Um, the Tibetan Community Center on Huntington Avenue in Richmond, California is for these Tibetans a place where to preserve their identity. It is here that during routine events and on special occasions, they return to reconnect with their cultural heritage. It is here that they come to re-engage with their language, their tradition, and their Buddhist values. The key function of the community center would be for us uh, a place where we would be able to gather, a place where we uh, would be able to preserve our culture. When I first arrived here, there were about uh, maybe at the most uh, 15 Tibetans in the Bay Area. We needed uh, a central location to converge at and to conduct uh, community uh, events. Uh, so a community uh, center uh, became a dream early on. To the Bay Area Tibetans, this community center is their sole claim to their occupied country, where for the last 55 years, China has sought to destroy their culture and tradition. Inside Tibet, Chinese soldiers brutally squash all peaceful political expressions for freedom. Over 1.2 million Tibetans are believed to have died as a direct or indirect result of the Chinese occupation. Since 2009, more than 130 Tibetans have committed self-immolations in order to bring the international focus on China's ongoing atrocities inside Tibet. Freedom for Tibet. 
May His Holiness the Dalai Lama return soon. These are the slogans chanted by the protesters in their final desperate acts. The purchase of this former office building in 2011 was made possible by the efforts of the Tibetan Association of Northern California, or TANK. To raise funds for the down payment and initial mortgages, the community members helped Tank in different ways. They participated in fundraising dinners. They helped make mumos for sale. They bought tickets to cultural shows and other entertainment events. They also generously donated from their own incomes. Many individual friends of Tibet and a few organizations have similarly extended kind contributions. Today, the community center is far from being the home dreamt up by its members. Although the property is well-built structure, much retrofitting needs to be done. The entire renovation project is envisioned in an architectural master plan, divided into multiple construction phases. Tank's pro bono architect, Barbara Brown, has led a team of dedicated design professionals, including architects, engineers, and contractors. The City of Richmond and Mayor Gail McLaughlin have been supportive from the very beginning and have granted all of the necessary permits, approvals, and moral support for the project. Two phases of construction have already been completed. First, structural upgrades have been implemented to support the anticipated increased occupancy within the building. Second, a new welcoming ground level lobby has been created its tile floor inlaid with the traditional Tibetan pattern. Now, the project has entered into the third and the most critical phase that includes removing partition walls on the main level to create an enlarged assembly hall. Once completed, it will accommodate over 300 people. In addition, many new building code upgrades are required. These will include energy efficient lighting and heating systems, four new handicap restrooms, a new commercial elevator, and fire sprinklers throughout the building. Uh, we've been carrying out renovation in phased manner uh, so that we would ultimately achieve our vision of not only this being functional, but also that this be aesthetically pleasing with all the modern amenities uh, that would provide a true sense of home. Throughout the entire renovation, the community members have been deeply involved. The project has benefited from the time and expertise of a wide range of professionals. Both during weekends and on weekdays, volunteers of all age groups stop by at the site to help with whatever task is in progress. The name of the community center, Deshi Pinsoling, was given by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. It means the auspicious island of peace and harmony. Once completed, this former office building will be transformed into a Tibetan community center, true to its name. Its design will incorporate traditional Tibetan motives. There will be separate classrooms for preschool, language instructions, and traditional music and dance. There will also be a large hall for prayer gatherings, general meetings, and education seminars on health care, employment, and immigration issues. A library on the second floor will provide access to Tibetan Buddhist texts. There will also be a cafe and a recreation room. Oh. 
The landscaped garden at the front of the center will be made into a peace plaza, incorporated with Tibetan sacred symbols. It will feature a chude or a stupa surrounded by traditional medicinal plants. The Tibetan Community Center of the Final Vision will provide an inspiring environment for a unique culture. It will not only be a repository for all things Tibetan, for its members, it will also provide a welcoming oasis of learning and exchange of ideas for non-Tibetan friends from far and near. So as far as the renovation budget is concerned, uh, we are looking at about $1 million to have this up and going. For the Bay Area Tibetans to achieve their dream, their efforts alone is not enough. They need your support. No help is too small. They look upon your generosity to realize their dream. Their home for hope.